Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Aspire Design Tour presented by Aspire Design and Home and Sapien Stone. I am Deb Martin, Aspire Managing Editor, and I will be your moderator today. Our panel of experts is going to share what they are seeing in the industry when it comes to the wide, wide world of porcelain surfaces. They will show us some recent projects and talk about their experience working with the material that Sapien Stone specializes in, and that is porcelain. We will be taking questions, so please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. You can type in your question at any time, um, and we will try to work them in during our discussion or if we need to hold them uh, until we're finished. Let me introduce our panel. We're so glad that all of you are here today with us. Joy Klein is the VP of Sales and Marketing for Sapien Stone. She has been with the parent company for 20 years, and she took over the Sapien Stone brand at the beginning of this year, just before the pandemic. Eric Torsch is the owner of Faithful Countertops, a large scale fabrication company that does precision high end stone fabrication in the tri state area. Lori Hayfoa is, is a Santa Monica based interior designer who launched her own firm, Hayfilla Design, in 2002. In 2018, she was awarded top honors by the NKBA Southern California for one of her kitchen designs, and she was also selected as the NKBA Innovator of the Year. Natalie Bourne Lamont of TVS Design Atlanta is a commercial designer with 10 years of experience focusing on sporting venues, food service, retail, and other mixed use projects. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Joy, who's gonna tell us all about Sapien Stone. Take it away, Joy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for participating and being with us here today. And um, thanks to Aspire for hosting um, this for us and organizing it and to our expert panelists for being um, here to talk about this topic that's um, dear to my heart. I'm excited to take on the Sapien Stone brand and um, take it to the next level. Um, to give you a little bit of background on Sapien Stone, Sapien Stone is owned by the Iris Ceramica Group, and Iris is a global leader in the production of innovative, high quality porcelain and high tech ceramics. They were actually the innovators of large format porcelains back in the early 60s and um, brought that technology to the US. Um, we are going to be celebrating our 60th anniversary next year. So have a lot of experience in producing these products. We've got seven collection brands for floor, wall, and porcelain slabs that um, we represent here in the US. Um, six factories, com company owned factories, two in Italy, one in Germany and one right here in the US. Um, so next slide, please. So what is Sapien Stone? Um, Sapien is a centered material. It's made with porcelain tile technology. It's made up of a proprietary blend that we have, a recipe that only we know, of natural minerals, all natural minerals, including felsbar, quartz, and clays, and minerals that create color. And um, these products end up being um, chemically uh, stable, frost proof, um, UV stable because it is all natural minerals, no dyes or polymers are used. And of course the hand selected raw um, minerals that are inside give a very high quality product that's easier to fabricate, install and maintain. Poor, uh, Sapien Stone is all made in Italy right now, but it is stocked heavily here in the US. We have distributor partners from Arizona, California, Texas, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Florida, and Tennessee that um, have our material because we want to, of course, have these slabs close to our customers. Um, the porcelain slab size that we are producing is 129 by 60 inches by 12 millimeters or half inch thick. Um, Sapien Stone was born out of a need. We were making um, quarter inch thick or six millimeter porcelain slabs and had so many of our clients wanting to use it for countertops. And, you know, there was challenges with just only a quarter inch thick material. You couldn't just leave the edge. 
Um, there wasn't enough material to bond as, as well. We had a lot of um, great experience, but then our R&D team decided, let's um, launch this 12 millimeter so that designers and architects can utilize this product to its full potential. And, you know, provide a, a perfect countertop that has low porosity, all the benefits of porcelain. So this image you see here is a project we're very proud of. It was seen on HGTV, Property Brothers, Celebrity IOU with Brad Pitt. So it's not a bad episode to watch. Um, <laughs> he um, basically wanted to um, help his makeup artist that he'd known for many, many years with her guest house. And this was a multifunctional space that um, the Property Brothers decided she's going to be doing makeup on the kitchen counter island. Let's pick a product that we're not going to have to worry about um, sealing and maintaining and coming in contact with different, um, you know, types of residues. And they also used the same product in the bathroom vanity. Um, if you do get to see it, 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 they did a chunkier vanity that looks really, really nice, a six inch um, apron. And both spaces utilized the Calicutta Statuario, which is um, available in a book match, really replicating what Mother Nature does in about an hour, um, you know, over millions and millions of years, and of course, in a very um, strong state. And the other benefit of porcelain and, and our product in general is the weight of the material. It's 5.75 pounds per square foot, which each slab is only about 300 pounds, unlike a marble or granite um, or other countertop surface that can weigh up to 600 pounds um, and, you know, make it more difficult for installation. And um, you can achieve a beautiful edge by doing a miter, which we're going to talk about that a little bit more moving forward. Next slide, please. So in porcelain slabs, we're really finding the classic um, marble looks and the exotic looking marbles really have become increasingly popular, especially, um, you know, in spaces where um, in the past, a marble really wouldn't have held up very well. And the technology has come so far. I mean, I've seen it just in my 20 years of being um, in this industry, you know, it's so high def and our, um, our technology, our resolution is 400 DPI or dots per inch. So it really gives you that realistic look. Um, and of course, all the other benefits of porcelain. Next slide. So wood looks, we're seeing, um, you know, normally I've had designers really want to use wood for a vanity or a kitchen countertop. And I mean, you, we see butcher block for islands, um, but again, you're going to have to maintain it. You're going to have to um, refinish it. And now you have a product that gives you no limitations and the finish on this material is very natural. Um, similar to natural wood and that's what we try to do. So we have finishes that replicate what we're replicating. So um, our woods come in natural finish and our concretes, which is the next slide. We're seeing a lot of interest in concrete because once again, concrete weighs about 18 pounds per foot. So um, I'll never forget Bonefish coming to me, super excited about um, the potential of using our um, countertops because of its lightweight ability and um, ease of install. What I love about these two applications is they're both only the 12 millimeter. So our products have through body pigmentation. So therefore the fabricator can just um, do a one eighth round over edge and you're good to go. Um, and it really provides that through body feel and you're not having to worry about seeing um, you know, any sort of difference between um, the material on the inside. And of course, a much lighter option and really a transitional minimalistic look. Um, the one on the right, I like to comment how this, this particular application, the island is a marble, more elegant look. And we're seeing a lot of designers lately use marbles and woods together, stone and um, woods together, and they use the concrete on the back. Um, which I actually think looks like a soapstone. So um, some of our concretes have that soapstone look. And again, you know, much easier to maintain over time. Next slide. These are our stone looks. Um, again, 
being able to give the designer an option um, with the gorgeous veining, which usually the veins are the weakest point of a stone. And um, these are our two newest colors. The one on the left is our palladium gray and the one on the right is our black diamond. Both we only decided to offer in a natural finish. So again, we're always trying to kind of emulate the stone that we're emulating. And you know, designers can either use a nice soft color or a more bold um, statement and you know, um, add a lush element to, to their projects. Next slide, please. Furniture trends. So you can take this material, of course, um, because I mentioned earlier, it's UV stable. Um, you can use it interior or exterior, create furniture pieces that are one of a kind for even case good tops um, as well, giving designers an option for a product that will last truly a lifetime. Next slide. So our material is heat resistant and that's the, another really great benefit. You can take a pot straight from um, you know, the cooktop or straight from the oven and put it on a material and it's thermal shock resistant. So you can go from cold to hot. Um, what's been really kind of uh, a new and exciting um, technology is induction cooking. And we're finding more and more of our customers asking us, how can we do this? You know, how do you do it? And there's companies here in the US that we've partnered with um, Invisa Cook is one of them where it's an undermount and you can cook right on top and designers can um, design a space that's multifunctional and where you can prepare delicious meals at home or professionally right on top of um, the same space that you can entertain later on. And this is something that I want to mention you can't do with quartz. Um, so if, you've, if you're familiar with quartz, you know, they that's one of the disadvantages and also going outside with quartz as well. It, it is not UV stable. So kind of given a little plug on, on why porcelain. Mm -hmm. And next, not only can you use um, this for residential application, but of course um, commercial, uh, there's companies that have chilling stations and warming stations. And here is a United Polaris Lounge where we supplied our uni ice on the right for the buffet and our pietro gray on the left, really giving a stylish, functional space um, that is easy to clean and maintain as well. You can use um, disinfectants and it will not break down the material. And of course, right now that's you know very important to all of us. Um, so wonderful that um, we've got this innovative option now. Next slide, please. So in order to service our customers, um, we have our distributor partners, as I mentioned, which if you go on our website, we do have a distributor. It's at sapienstone.us and you can see our distributor near you. And we also have partnered with kitchen and bath showrooms across the US to bring an actual display to you. Um, many have islands, um, kitchen kitchenettes, uh, vignettes, uh, bathroom vanities. So. Um, you can find our product and just reach out to us and we'll find the closest um, showroom to you. The other um, really important aspect of porcelain is the fabrication side. We've always taken the strategy from day one, um, you know, make sure we have fabricators understanding how to work with this product, what tools they need. Um, and it is an investment up front if they haven't um, done it yet, but you've, if you've got the right blade, you can really achieve um, the same results as you do with quartz and other products. So our strategy was always to making sure that everyone understands how to work with our product. We happen to have one of our master craftsmen with us today. Um, Eric at Faithful Countertops is based in New Jersey and he's going to tell you about the trends that he's seeing from his side of the business. Next. Uh, thank you, Joy, for the introduction. Um, I want to thank everybody, and I want to thank uh, you know Aspire Magazine and, and the uh, Safety Stone for um, for your invitation. Um, it's been you know it's it's a pleasure to 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 be with you guys. Um, so yes, I want to tell a little bit about myself. You know what we do, and you know how we started, and and you know go through the uh, the process of you know fabrication and 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 dealing with the uh, with the porcelain, and you know. Um, 
and safe installment and how we deal with the customers and what we do, what we recommend, what we don't recommend. So, you know, I started business about 10 years ago, um, starting with my brother, you know, it was, uh, you know, me and him doing installations and fabrications and then start growing the company. Right now we're over 70 people, um, over 70 employees. We do in, you know, multi-family business with, you know, units. So we do a lot of kitchen doors and, and the architect designer business. Um, so when we start, you know, when we get introduced to porcelain, it was about six years ago. Um, we start, you know, we saw the product. We we kind of love it, but you know, when we start cutting it, then we we are just it just was felt. You know, we didn't know what we're doing. You know, we were testing stuff. We were breaking. We used actually we started with a quarter quarter inch uh, material. It was you know it was a disaster. It really, that was that was the thing. When we start, when we got introduced to saving stone. And the half inch, we were like, no, we don't want to go for it. You know, we just, we don't like the product. We just don't, don't want to do it. But then, you know, eventually we changed our mind. We start, start um, using the product um, more and more. And we start learning how to cut, how to glue the miters, how to, how to do, you know, to just the normal jobs in the beginning. And then once we learn everything, we start actually testing the product and we start using in different applications, building the things out of it, you know, the, the integrated things out of it, you know, using the different glues, using different techniques. So we actually end up, you know, testing everything. At the end of the day, we receive our rewards out of it. We one of the visa shop of, of, of Saving Stone, probably I would say even in the country. Uh, we have a lot of customers calling us every day asking for questions. You know, we, we very well known on, the, on the Instagram. We post our pictures on Instagrams, you know, we tell people what we do. Um, yeah, so I will say, I want to, I want, so, so that's kind of like our background about the, uh, what we do and how we do. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit about fabrication. I want, you know, I know there's a lot of, a lot of, um, um, but I want to, I don't want to say, yeah, I will say, you know, bad opinion about the other uh, porcelain you know there's a lot of fabricators that you know they, they try it and they didn't work out and because they didn't know what they're doing they didn't have the right tools to to use they, they didn't have the you know the training that the the that the, the they need to 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 understand what's the porcelain not every porcelain is the same i can tell you that you know one of the best is like in stone you know we cut different brands um of porcelain and, and there are everyone is different there's no the porcelain is it's not just the porcelain there's different you know different uh, techniques that needs to be cut you know needs to be used to cut the porcelain there's also um uh different machines that you have to have you know there's investment but there's also rewards after that um so we as a you know company we we said you know what well, we have to separate ourselves from the uh, the competition and kind of go a different road and, and try to try to build you know our new company based on on the porcelain and um yeah so we we start investing in the machines we start investing in the um training of people our people we start um we start putting in a lot of money uh, you know to to uh, to technology so that helps us, us to to obviously to work with the product um as far as the um the application where it can be used i mean this product can be used everywhere i mean there is no limits on the on the product this product could be used outside, inside fireplaces, you know, building hoods, building kitchens, you know, you can build the sinks out of the product, you can build the uh, integrated sinks out of the product, it's really for furniture, it's for everything. And um, I think the biggest problem that we, we faced, maybe not now, but we faced in the beginning was, you know, a lot of people says, oh, it chipped. It chipped, you know, it's not, not comfortable to use and, you know, we get this bad opinion from, from you know, from the other fabricators and, and, and the customers. So we have to face that. We, are, we, will, we will tell people, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's the same product as everything else. Um, it chips like everything else. I mean, really, if you, if you put an impact on the, on, the, on the porcelain and any quartz or marble or granite, you're going to have the same issue. You're gonna have the same chip. You're gonna have the same problem. So you have to be careful with everything that you do. It's, I compare the countertop to to the car. If you take care of your countertops, if you if you clean it and do everything that needs to be done, it's gonna look brand new every single day. It's gonna shine every single morning that you wake up. It's just that's how it works. So as far as the um, um uh, the trends that we see, I mean, we see a lot of uh, you know a lot of requests for fireplaces. I mean, you can go on our Instagram, you can see, you know, we've done a couple of them, you know, they're beautiful, they, you know, customer loves it because of the look. You don't have to go with the marble, you don't have to go with the granite, your quartz, 
you just go with the porcelain that it's easy to install. It's very, you know, clean and have a very unique, unique design. And the second song has beautiful designs. I can tell you this, you know, I love it. A lot of, you know, customers love this. And, if, you know, we have designers, and, you know, with us together, they can tell a little bit about, about it and, you know, and why they're using the stepping stone for their projects. And also, um, yeah, I think if there is um, any fabricator today, I think don't be scared to use a product. You know, you have to, if it breaks one, one or two times, you just have to, you know, call us or call the uh, Sapiens Stone, you know, they, they have a very good, great technician that can walk you through, tell you what you do wrong, or, you know, why it's not working. And then we'll tell you exactly what needs to be done. If not, you know, we, we also value, you know, give us a call, send us an email. We also help you out, you know, to understand what the product is and, and how to work with it. So I think, uh, you know, I wanna, I wanna um, also say that um, you know the same thing with the um, with, with the cast you know with, with our customers you know customers uh, you know the homeowners you know don't be scared to use the product you know you can see actually the great picture of it you know we just done um, this project we finished probably about like a month ago we built the um, this whole vanity with the with the rub doors and everything everything is covered with a 45 miners uh, so everything is connected as a one one solid um, um, you know piece of furniture. We're seeing a lot of floating um, trends and floating uh, vanities lately, for sure. And this is this is something that I mean, we got a lot of requests from. You know, we, we post the uh, the picture on Instagram, and and I don't know, I think like twenty customers just call us and, and says, you know, we love it, we want to do something like that. So we actually able. So we also what, what, what's what's good about it is we we partner with other other other. Um, Manufacturers, we we partner with the uh, metal manufacturer, mm -hmm. builds the uh, custom sinks for us. And we also partner with you know, with the millwork companies that they do uh, bases like this for us, so we can we can offer to the customer. So you know, don't be scared. I mean, this is a lot of opportunities for for us. Obviously, as a fabricator, we 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 grow the, we grow the business, and and we just don't want to be just associated with just the countertops. You know, there's you know when you. I think this is the the the, the more model that people have. I mean, especially the fabricators that you just you know they just associate them to the fab, to the countertops and they don't do anything else. There's, besides the countertop, there's probably another eighty percent of the other businesses that you can gain and you can you can do. And porcelain is definitely one of them that you know that brings a lot of potentials and, and value to the business. Yeah, I think um, yeah. I'm, I mean, if everybody has any questions, you know, feel free to, to ask me, but I will just hand to, uh, to Lori. Well, I'm going to make a quick statement on the outdoor kitchens. You know, Eric, we're seeing so much more, um, you know, people wanting an outdoor space. And of course, that's the perfect application. Um, this project that you did, um, you know, in New Jersey, where of course, you know, you've got frost, you've got issues, and this is a perfect spot for, for Sapien. And then the next slide goes over the different edge profiles that you can do, which is amazing. Um, you know, the options that designers have with the product. And, you know, again, you know, the, there's no, there's no limitation with the product. You know, a lot of people think, you know, I can only do is the edge. I can only do, uh, you know, build up. No, you don't have to. You can do different edges. You can do, you know, reverse bevels. You can do normal bevels. You can do round edges. You can, I mean, there's unlimited, unlimited options that you can do with a porcelain. And as I mentioned earlier, the next slide shows an up close of that one kitchen that I talked about, the soapstone. And, you know, you can see here how we layer that vein into the body of the material. So that gives the designer the ability to just use the, the raw slab. Um, I think it's called like flat slab. I, I'm learning new terms every day in this business, but, um, and, you know, and it still looks very rich and, you know, gives you that kind of modern transitional look like I showed you earlier. Um, <coughs> and, you know, we're one of the only manufacturers that does this, you'll find many of the others just have a solid body. Um, so, and it's not, doesn't give you this option. And now I think anything else, Eric? That I said this is another trend that we see that you know people don't like. I mean, people just like the half inch, um, you know, simple edge, and 
with the safety stone actually you have the body colors that you can you know um the the that's not you don't see only just a little you know white line or you see actually you know veiny going through so that's a beautiful thing to to have that enforcement perfect thanks eric so next we have Lori, who's going to talk about um, some trends in residential design. This is a beautiful project she worked on in the Hollywood Hills, California. I'll let her tell you about. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, this actually was the very first project that I worked with Sapien Stone on. Um, I'm fairly new to Sapien Stone, and I'm finding that I'm loving it, and I'm recommending it to every single client. Um, mostly because of the aesthetics, to be honest with you. It's just all the veining and all of the products are so beautiful. Um, and in this kitchen, you can see, well, you can kind of see in this picture, but if you stand all the way back and you look at the, the hood wall, the veining goes straight across the whole back wall, like through the backsplash, through the hood, back to the backsplash and around, um, which is such a beautiful detail. And the idea was that uh, this was a very dark, um, dark brown old uh, kitchen and we just wanted to brighten it up and lighten it up and we just didn't want to cram cabinets everywhere and we just wanted that hood to sort of go away we wanted it to sort of um, blend in and just it, we didn't want it to be an eye catcher um, so really the stone um, creates that beautiful sort of monolithic simple serene um, feel I was really impressed with the fabricators. I was impressed with the way they were able to get this, uh, the veining to continue all the way through. Um, but again, it was my very first experience with it and I had a great experience. Um, the, the wood countertop uh, at the seating area, honestly, I didn't, I don't think that the wood looking sapien stone was out when I did this. Um, I think maybe a few months later it came out. Um, but I did see it in person installed at the factory in Italy. It's beautiful. And I, I, I wish I was able to use that here. Um, I mean, this wood's beautiful as well, but um, for durability reasons, I mean, this material is completely, I mean, you just can't destroy it. It's amazing. Um, and I, so those are the two things that are the most important for me as a designer is obviously aesthetics, if it's beautiful. If it's not beautiful, I'm not gonna even show anyone. And then um, durability, because I don't really want any callbacks. Like if I can have this minimal amount of callbacks as possible, that just makes, uh, you know, makes everybody's lives easier and makes happier clients at the end of the day. And you know, everybody wants the look of marble, but they can't, they don't wanna deal with the maintenance of it. So this, this is obviously the perfect solution. I do a lot of outdoor projects. Oh yeah, there's the hood. So you can kind of see the veining even coming through the bottom of the um, edge of the, of the hood. And um, I'm not sure the microwave picture, I guess, is we're just trying to hide all the appliances so that door opens and closes so, so you don't see any microwave. Um, but that doesn't have anything to do with the stone. <laughs> um, but I'm using this stone, uh, Sapien Stone, you know, like I said, on every project now, I'm at least recommending it to, to every client. I'm working on an outdoor um, buffet. It's a huge buffet um, where we're actually doing the um, induction cooktop into the stone so you don't see any cooking element. And we're also doing a chilling element in the stone. So like you said, I think you used the term uh, thermal shock resistant. And that's, yeah, and so I had to write that down because I hadn't really used that term before. But, um, and that's why we're using this material for this buffet. So. When you look at it, um, it's going to look like a big monolithic cube of stone. It's going to be all mitered right. edges. And it's just going to look monolithic. And then, you know, miraculously, they'll put their salads out on the chilled top. She's going to have, she, a lot of times she has um, ice sculptures that she'll have on another chill top in another area in the hors d'oeuvre section. Um, and then, you know, she'll have the heated sections for all of her meat. We're going to have a carving station and a tapenaki table. So um, I'm really excited to use Sapien Stone on that. On that outdoor product or project. Lori, uh, can I interrupt for a second? I have a sure. question that's actually perfect um, for what you're talking about right now, okay. um, which is from Eugenia, who asks, "How do you mark the area for the induction cooktop?" Um, I don't think you have to mark it. Do you? I mean, I'm mm. not sure you have to mark the area. Do you have to mark it on the stone top? I'm not sure. I have, we haven't. Quite not that, that I'm aware of. Um, yeah. And, you know, Natalie, if you know more, I just actually was texting to get a, you know, good answer on that. I know that, you know, we've even talked about doing um, charging stations where you can charge your phone sitting on top of, you know, and they'll put the little lightning bolt um, so that you know where to put your phone. And that's going to be obviously the wave of the future, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I can I can elaborate that on a little bit more. Um, the, the you do not have to mark the um, under counter. Um, usually on the back side you have the knobs, so um, on the food service side they'll be able to distinguish where that element is. But you do not have to mark it at all, and that's the beauty of it is to be able to to have this simple surface where nothing's interrupting it, and not having to have all these different cuts in the surface. Yeah, I've seen it where it's etched, you know, I've seen it yeah. in, in your Cucina where they've etched it, but I, the fact that yeah. you don't have to do that is why, I mean, one of the reasons we're hoping we don't have to do anything like that, because we yeah. really don't want to give any inkling or any hint that it's anything but a monolithic cube of stone um, yep. when it's not in use. Yep. Um, but Eugenia, I'll definitely um, get back with you on, you know, a more solid answer. I know I've seen that they've etched and there's a little light to know that it's on, but it's, you don't have to do that. Um, and, you know, once I get a, a, a more solid answer, I can um, email out to, yeah. to you. I want to say that we actually have done it and we actually um, um, router little circles where the uh, where the cooktop is gonna be when the burner has is actually on the on the cooktop. So you and I we actually done it this on saving stone. So what's good about it that the saving stone is a it's a through body material, kind of through body material, and and the body of it perfectly matched with the surface. So when you do that, you actually see little. If, if, you know, we usually recommend do not use polished uh, material for the uh, for those surfaces. We you know stay with it with the um, with the slate material. Um, uh, so natural finish. Natural finish. So actually, yeah. when, when you we we able to do on the CNC the the circles where the burners are, and you can't see them, you just you kind of you can feel them a little bit. So that's how the customer you know can kind of locate it where the burners are. Do they have five, four or five, six burners? That's you know. It's, uh, they can etch. Um, they can etch the burner in, and they. The, I just got a good answer from um, Invisicook. Um, he also said that there's a built-in beeping detection device as well. Um, and he said some just mark an X actually in the middle as well, which is done with etching that the fabricator does. So again, it's very subtle. Um, it's not anything that you know, but it gives you that center point of your of your heating element. So um, that's a way that you can do that X marks spot, or maybe like Eric said, you can do something even more elaborate um, and etch a circle or, you know, another way of showing that that's where the cooktop heating element is or chilling element. Yeah, I like the idea of just a little X because then it doesn't look like a burner. Correct, right. It's subtle. Yeah, it's subtle. So there's a possibility we may, may we may do that. We haven't just we haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, we're still working on the uh, sp the specific Great question. technical details. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. So for me, uh, what I love about Saving Stone is the aesthetics, the maintenance, the fact that it's UV stable for outdoor, the thickness. I love. I mean, the fact that we can just do the half inch thick. Also, the weight of it, like you said earlier, having it lightweight. Um, is very helpful. I have these um, cantilevered shelves that are pulled off the back wall um, here in my house that I'm going to, um, you know, slide like a sleeve of stone on and, 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 um, and I don't think we could do that with heavy marble. Um, so um, that also is something that's really important uh, to me as a designer. Um, but, you know, as far as like future trends, I think aesthetically, um, you know, I think the black stone with the heavy white veining, I think you have one, um, I don't know if I can pronounce it right. Um, what color is uh, it? The dark marquina. Y yes, mm -hmm. yes, that one. Is that new? That's really um, beautiful. It's, yeah, it's one we've had for quite some time. Um, we did recently post on our Instagram the Fable and Spirit um, restaurant in California that used it for their bar and it, it is striking. So and, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I you think know, that's the, a trend. Yes. I'm seeing more and more, um, requests for dark, um, for mm -hmm. black, um, you know, so that's definitely, and also seeing more and more for the natural finish and our, we have a silky finish as well, which is like a high honed. So it's in between, natural and polished and a lot of designers don't want to see that high polish now because they'll have it on the on the um, cabinets mm -hmm. so they want to see uh, you know a contrasting um, yeah, finish yeah. right mm -hmm. right so yeah. it's exciting to have you know evolving finishes now that weren't even available a few years ago 
Yeah, I think aesthetically, you know, design wise, there's a lot of mixing of materials, the multi textural feel like you're saying having a little bit of like honed or textured, you know, countertop with the high gloss cabinets, you know, with some some type of metal elements, you know, that's definitely a trend that's happening right now. Um, I can kind of add if I can add on to that. We're actually working on an international project um, where we were wanting to do a polished stone on the floor to emulate the real thing. And just because of your DCNOA, DCNA, DCOF, um, we could not use it. So what we started to do was mix the finishes. So doing a honed with a polish to kind of get that, that texture change and, and give more depth in the flooring. So, you know, to be able to have those, all those um, additional finish options has really been a game changer for us recently. For sure. Okay. Yeah. So next we'll lead into Natalie, who's going to talk about a project that we did a few years back, but we're still very proud of. Um, and, <laughs> so, and we're proud um, of then. I know we won some awards on this one too. Yeah, we did. We did. We won a, a tile award on this project um, the, for the Italy, uh, the Italian, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. Um, but what you're seeing here, this is um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, this project was completed about three years ago. Um, it was a five-year project, so we started in 2011. Um, it was 39 months of construction. Um, TVS Design actually had scope in majority of this building, um, but today we'll just focus on the premium spaces. These are my babies. <laughs> um, so what you're seeing here is we worked on all of the clubs. There's seven clubs within the space, and they are sprinkled throughout all the levels of the stadium. And we did all of the suites. There's 190 suites um, within. Um, and we worked with Sapien Stone on all these countertops and worked with Levy um, because they needed to have the induction warmers that were integrated into all the countertops. And they also had the cooling elements, or as you said, the thermal shock resistance. Um, so we, we originally were looking at quartz and we ended up testing all of our quartz and they all failed with the induction warmers. And so Sapien Stone came into our world and we were really excited about it because we all, the, you know, this is the gauge tile really was kind of starting to make its, its presence into the architectural design world. And so we were excited to use it. Um, so what we did is if you look on the left hand side of the picture, this is the AMG lounge. So this is Mercedes Benz Club, um, but you can see that this curved element here um, houses a bunch of induction warmers and the, the cooling elements. Um, and you cannot see it. We did not have to mark them at all um, within the space as the, as the chefs and, and the levy behind it would, would um, be controlling all of those elements. Um, but again, the, the beauty of this is that we had a curved surface. So to be able to use this gauge tile, large gauge tile and be able to cur do a curved surface was really exciting for us. Um, and what you don't see on the left hand side of this counter is that you have about a five foot return where it waterfalls down to the floor. Um, so you've got a huge span of this waterfall edge with the sapien tile. Um, the, the biggest thing with the spaces in these, in these types of facilities is durability, durability, durability. I mean, these spaces are getting beat to death. So um, we really, to be able to have a product that's going to wear, that's, that is going to stand the test of time and the, the scratch resistance. And, and like Joy actually told me the other day is that if there is a scratch, you can actually buff it out on this product, which is pretty incredible. For the um, polished finish to not yeah. like just the, which is what you used. But. Yeah, we used all polished in all of these areas. And when we first started, there really wasn't a lot of options. So just to see how what's emerged over the last eight years and the technology that, that they have, which I think you said they were printing at 400 DPI. And just to see that, you know, the vein, it just looks real. So, you know, and the cost impact is dramatic and saving money and going with real stone or quartz. So we were really excited to be introduced to this product and be able to work with Sapien Stone. Um, and the fact that we were able to um, integrate these warmers and cooling elements without making the counter look completely messy and have all these cut lines in it was really, really what we wanted to achieve with this. I um, wanted to mention Natalie too. Um, 
how you know we use the six millimeter yes. on the edge to create that radius um and so the 12 millimeter is on the top and then the six millimeter can actually be curved um the 12 millimeter we don't get much flex out of that at all so um that's how we were able to do that sometimes you can cut the material down to create that but um for that particular um, space that's how we achieve that and also we did produce a custom color for um, this project which we can do and i wanted everybody to realize that that as long as there's it's usually 200 slabs is our sweet spot for custom production and now um, we are even able to do that in a 2cm size so for larger projects where you want to use a sapien color um, we can create a 2cm and a lot of our six millimeter um, porcelains can be created into sapien stone if you find something that you like that's not currently sapien stone we can actually do that if the project is large enough yeah that's great natalie we have a question from sure. amy who asked you mentioned flooring and yes. she's asking um if the flooring use of this product accessible for people who are elderly wheelchair bound etc would it meet ada guidelines yeah, so it just depends on the finish. Um, you would have to use a honed or a natural finish if you're using this product on the floor in 12 millimeter thickness is what we recommend um, just to eliminate any cracking on the floor. Um, but yes, it is accessible. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing here, and if you can go back one more slide, I'd like to just talk a little bit to the left hand. Oh, one, go forward, please. Um, so what you're seeing here is the Gullwing Club. This is actually Arthur Blank's personal club. His suite is in this, which Arthur Blank is the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, um, if anybody didn't know that. Um, but you can see the Sapien Stone. We have waterfall edge um, here on the left-hand side, and we did this in a solid black finish um, because we actually, Arthur wanted to use a lot of natural stone. Um, we've got stone on the walls that are actually to the right of us. You can't see it in this photograph. Um, but we, we just didn't want to fight with the natural stone that he insisted on using, but just to be able to miter that edge and waterfall it down to the ground, it just has a really clean profile. And again, these all have the induction warmers integrated underneath. Um, and then on the right hand side, you're seeing the Mercedes Benz um, suite. So this is a um, 22 person suite. And again, we're using that same sapien stone in the solid black on the back wall where you're seeing the Mercedes Benz logo. Um, and I think the, the, the biggest thing for us in using this large format product is durability, the cost, easy maintenance. Um, and that's really kind of what our clients are looking for in the end game for a lot of these commercial projects is what's going to stand the test of time, what's in what's easy maintenance. And again, like I said, being able to scratch out or buff out anything is really what our clients are looking for. Um, and again, I think a big thing with fabrication, I know we've talked a lot about fabrication and in, in, in the commercial side and specifications. I think it's really knowing the product and knowing the faces of the product and how to use it and how to book match it, how to slip match, um, and just making sure that you're being super thorough in that. And, and I, I think I can't stress that enough because we draw every panel the veining, how we book match it, what panel it is, and just understanding the factory. And, and, you know, recently we had a factory we were working with that they had the panel types, but they didn't have, but when they, they shipped it out and in, for the installer when, the, when they were purchasing it, it all had different faces in it where we, you know, we're trying to design those certain faces and where they're laid. So I think that's kind of a big thing to understand too with using the large gauge tile and, um, you know, just, you know, when you start to kind of think about it something that we've always kind of run into and you know what type of grout and the joints that you can use and all of that and it's great that you can specify and say this is yeah. what we want we want yeah. these faces and this is how you know because yeah. normally in a natural product you can't do that you get yes. what you know i mean you can once you mm -hmm. see this lab um, and the fabricator can help there for sure yeah and i think trends just to you know piggyback from Lori, everything she's saying is exactly kind of what you know what we're seeing and and the blacks with the really dramatic veining, you know, creating that wow art piece is, you know, that's what we're looking for. And again, the precious stones that kind of iridescent, you know, just really 
beautiful look. We're seeing a lot of those and, and just the veining with color. We've been seeing a lot with color too, which has been really, really exciting. Great. Yeah. I have a few questions here that I'm going to throw out and anybody who um, wants to can answer them. But the first <laughs> one is from Richard and he at says, the idea of using porcelain for shower walls is fantastic. However, my clients tend to shy away because of the cost. What aspects of fabrication and install drive up the cost? And are there any great ways to reduce the cost? And maybe we can talk a little bit about um, the cost relative to natural, to granite, to, to other options that are out there. Joy, I don't know if you want to take that. Yeah, or... I, I will. And then maybe I can have Eric um, comment too. But basically, um, you know, a lot of people think porcelain and, you know, when you're looking at the cost factor and a 12 by 24 porcelain, it's just like baking a cake. I mean, it's a lot more difficult to bake a five by 10 foot sheet of porcelain versus, you know, a 12 by 24 piece. So, you know, the cost does go up. So if you're not comparing it to a standard 12 by 24, which of course we have and can offer too, um, you know, when you're comparing it to stone, you're going to end up saving. Um, but if you're comparing it to a 12 by 24 or a ceramic wall tile, I mean, it's, you're going to be in two different ballparks. It's, you know, not comparing apples to apples, but one benefit is in every sapien stone color, except for the noir, which the noir is a solid black. So I kind of do have a solid black I can offer. It's just not the same exact. And they're all produced at different times too, but we do have a six millimeter version. So you can use that in shower walls. Um, I just did a, a general contractor friend of ours because we do Marriott. Um, he did a lot of Marriott's with us and he just did his whole um, house with our statuario. And, you know, he had every option on the planet. And, you know, I was very proud that he picked ours. Um, and, you know, it was six millimeter. So you don't have to use the 12 millimeter. It's really up to your installer, their comfort level. Some like that thicker material to do the plumbing um, cutouts and things of that nature. Um, but you can save if you use six millimeter, the cost is less. So I don't know if there's anything else, maybe, um, you know, trying to limit your amount of niches in the shower, Eric, maybe that I think, could I lower think, costs. I think that probably, um, Probably will happen. The you know the people that you know the Richard was try to use or, or call it a job, they maybe didn't feel comfortable, and I see that so many times that people don't feel comfortable using the product and just just overprice the job, and you know they just uh, just throwing the crazy numbers that you know the the, the the homeowner cannot afford, and they just end up choosing going with the regular tiles instead of the large format tiles. So I think this is very important to 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 choose the right people for the to, for the right product. And, and for the for the for the right project so so just just make you know if you if you want to go with the with the uh, large format tiles either it's, if it's a six millimeter or 12 millimeter just make sure that that, that you know is, is a fabricator or the tile guy have ever done use use that before and you know he's feel comfortable using it because if he doesn't use it he's not feeling comfortable using it you know he's gonna drive the price higher just to make the homeowner change the other product to the to, to small to small smaller version so he, he does, does, does lose the uh, the ability to finish up the project i have a good example i just um quoted a job in atlanta um and they're using our wood our brovere bio um, for a multi-family um it's only a three unit um we're working with a developer and I gave it to two different fabricators. One came back with $25,000 and one came back with $11,000. And it's only three units. It's the kitchen and the bathroom, all the same product, um, no mitered edge. But I mean, you can see the difference in costs that I got, you know, and it may be because that one fabricator is really busy and he doesn't need the work. You know, it, you don't, you really don't know. So you just gotta, like Eric said, and, and let us know, we have a list of fabricators um, Eric is our largest in the country and does most of our work in the Northeast for us. Um, but, you know, we do have fabricators locally, um, you know, spread throughout that we've trained and, you know, we'll give you those, those good prices, which both of those were, but again, you can see how far apart that cost was. And while we're on the subject of fabrication, here's another question. 
Um, from a fabrication perspective, how do you actually curve the material? Is it hairline cuts in the back or is there that much flex in the material? There is a flex in the, yeah, I mean, there is a, there is a flex in the six millimeters. So actually you'd be able to curve uh, certain radiuses, not everything. I think, uh, I'm not sure right now, but I think it's on every uh, 10 feet, you can curve up to mm -hmm. nine, I believe. Or, 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 or it's seven. two inches and 10 feet. Yes, I mean, we curve even more than that. I mean, we've done it. We've done the um, uh, curved ceiling with the uh, with the large format tile, six, six millimeter, I think was nice. like eight inches overall. Oh my gosh. Yes, we, we were able to do that. So so it's actually, you know, we have to test it, you know. I mean, right. still, you just have to take every product, every different porcelain, um, every different color, you know, give up differently. You know, it's not, it's not, you know, whites or blacks are, are work differently. So you have to really take True. a sample. Yep. And, you know, that's the way to, to, to do it. Okay, and we have a couple of uh, questions about the induction cooktops. Um, do you need to remove the counters to service the cooktops or warmers? No. Oh, no, it's all undermount, like yeah, an undermount, all undermount sink. So if they have, yeah, if they have to access it, they'll go to the under the back side of where the equipment site is. So no, they do not have to do anything with the countertop. Yep, it's all serve service underneath, correct? Yep. And you can feel the heat. Um, you know, someone I see asked that question. The heat show through. Um, yes. You don't see the the red, but you do. You can feel the heat. Um, and I we've only twelve millimeter is so far the thickest that we've been able to achieve um, with induction cooking. We are testing our two cm right now um, to see, but um, you know, there was a question on when do you recommend 2CM? Yes. That's just, you know, again, that just depends on the customer and, you know, what type of edge and the scale, the size, I think everybody probably could agree with me, you know, it depends on the scale of the space. Um, but you can achieve, you know, a similar look. I've got a small piece here that was done, um, you know, a two inch um, mitered edge and you can see how, you know, sharp it looks, how good it looks. Um, even with that little rounded um, edge, but you know you don't have to have it. Just does save on cost too if it's a larger project, and you know they just want to buff the edge and put an eighth of an inch rounded top on it. Then you know that will save without having to do a miter. And also so. for fabrication purposes, I mean if you if you're gonna start using two cm, that's gonna drive the fabrication cost. You know it's much harder to cut. It takes more time to cut it. I mean we don't see any any advantage using two, two cm material versus you know half inch yeah plus it's a lot heavier <laughs> like more time to, to fabricate it it's just uh, it, it and drive the cost of the, uh, the fabrication even higher so i mean if there's no reason to use two right. CM with a half inch with a 12 millimeter material i agree that's why we only offer 12 millimeter unless there's some need <laughs> There's also a question, a fabrication question here about the the polished surface. So if the surface is shiny, you know, the, the highly polished surface, how do you finish the edge to make it look like the surface? Is there a difference between the, the edges and the, the flat surface? It's a normal techniques as you use for quartz, for granite, for marble. Um, you're able to, to polishing and achieve the, uh, the high, high gloss polish on the edges. Okay. With, yeah. It's all done by hand, right? That same. part of it. Yeah, I mean, with the same thing. You can do it in, with the machine, you know, with the CNC or or, or, or uh, by hand, yes, yeah, so you can polish it and achieve the same, the same finish. Um, Joy, a couple of questions here about colors. What colors are available in 20 millimeter and it is, and is it through body porcelain? So the 20 millimeter um, made in Italy is through body, but we do not offer any colors right now um, unless you're ordering 200 slabs or more. So we don't have any specific, um, I have samples of two that we have done, um, one of our whites and it's this pure white through um, and a gray salad that we, we've made in the past. But again, it's, it's for specific projects. Um, but usually, you know, I try to let customers know that there's no need to go with 2CM 
um, you can achieve the same thing in 12 millimeter um, and it's, you know, cost less, so. And then the, the other question about color uh, is about veining, really. Is the veining through full body? Um, right now, that's a good question because the two I've seen, I have not done a 2CM yet in a marble look, so I would have to ask the factory just to be sure. Um, we just started posting on our uh, website that you know we can do 2CM. It's available, but again, it's for volume 200 slabs or more. So um, I haven't had a need yet, so I would have to check, but um, you know, I can get back to that question. Okay. And the last question I have here is about how to become a preferred fabricator. Is there a place where people can get that information? Yes, so um, we're going to send out an email and um, let everybody know, you know, how to reach me. And if you go to our website, info at Sapienstone, um, I will, I get those emails and I filter them out to the correct person. And um, we have a technical services manager who is very experienced, has his own fabrication shop. Um, every two years, he updates our fabrication guide. He's constantly looking for, you know, the best adhesives, the best, which we have all of our own um, tinted dyes available um, as well for our product. But um, yes, we can easily get you a quick start um, fabrication training and get you on our list to um, give out to customers in your area um, that you've gone through our training. So definitely reach out and we'll get you get you trained. Perfect. Well, that's all the questions that I have. Thank you everybody for participating. Thank you to all of our attendees and I uh, hope everybody learned a lot about Sapien Stone. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you. Bye.